day. Rasmussen's encephalitis is a rare inflammatory brain disease characterized by a severe intractable epilepsy and unilateral progressive motor defect associated with contralateral hemispheric atrophy. Theodor Rasmussen et al. were the first to describe it in 1958 as a focal seizure due to chronic localized encephalitis. The etiology of Rasmussen's encephalitis still remains unknown. Viral in infection or autoimmune process is considered as a possible cause of the disease. Resistant focal seizures originated from one of the cerebral hemispheres and hemiparesis as a clinical core of Rasmussen's syndrome. Prognosis is usually poor. Most patients die within a few years after the onset of the disease. In 9 of 10 cases, Rasmussen's encephalitis begins in childhood. The Neoclonus phenotype manifests itself as a permanent cortical neoclonus on the side of paresis. Alexei Kozhevnikov was the first to describe this type of the disease, which he called Epilepsia Portialis Continua. Epileptic phenotype of Rasmussen encephalitis demonstrates epileptic seizures, but not the permanent neoclonus. In the first case, epilepsy affected the patient at the age of 7, with daily dialeptic seizures, swollen as frozen stiffness and fixed glands. Within the age of 7 to 9 years, the seizures are cut every day. At the age of 9, focal motor seizures without loss of consciousness started. They started first in the right hand or foot, spreading them to the entire right half of the body. By the age of 18, the patient had a permanent myoclonus in the right limbs, more in the foot, and the right side hemiparesis. Secondary generalized tonic-clonic seizures were rare. Treatment with different anti-epileptic drugs, immunoglobulins and glycocorticoids, as well as vagus nerve stimulation, did not produce any significant effect. In the second case, seizures began at the age of 22, with déjà vu and visual hallucinations, accompanied after a few months by the secondary generalized tonic-clonic seizures. When treatment with anti-epileptic drugs was started, the generalized tonic seizures turned to temporal syncope. The lesion of the left front lobe was visible on MRI and continuous slowing in the left frontal region with rare sharp slow wave complexes was recorded on EEG. Despite the aggressive anti-epileptic treatment using octagam and prednisolone, the patient's condition progressively worsened to frequent episodes of partial status epilepticus and serious mental retardation. Currently, we have only one radical method of, to treat Rasmussen's encephalitis, called hemispherectomy. We hope that in the not so distant future, new methods of treating this serious disease will be available. Thank you for your attention.